number seven, God watches over his word. <clears throat> Jeremiah 1 and 12 said, The Lord said to me, you have, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. So let me tell y'all something that I've been doing for a number of years and it work. Prescription. Yes. Yes. Prescription. Now I'm going to show you something. And this is especially with daddies. A daddy can tell a child something. It might be saying, that he might told him, I'm going to get y'all a bicycle on the 4th of July. Well, you know when the 4th of July come, them children waiting on that body. Mm -hmm. They looking. And if daddy forget the 4th of July, you know what them children going to say? Daddy, you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Am I right about it? Right. Daddy, you said. Yep. Now, now let, 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 let's bring this back to the text. When you pray scripture, you can say, Father, you said. Father, you said that I'm going to have abundance and not lack. Father, you said that I was going to be the head and not the tail. Father, you said that I was going to have more than enough. Father, you said, and I trust what you said. Why I trust what you said? Second Peter 3 and 9 says he's not slack concerning his promises. Father, you said. Somebody going to remember that. Father, you said. No matter what it looked like. Is somebody get something today? There's no comparison to the eyes of God, even when you put it against technology. Our text talks about he watches over you. He guides you. God is telling you, I will be your teacher. We, we, you don't mind me teaching today, huh? He said, I'll be your teacher. He said, I'm going I'm to show you the best path for your life. Why? Because God knows what's best. He said, I will advise you and watch over you. You know what I used to hear sometimes? When the old folks say, look at that, they ain't watching the children. <laughs> They ain't watching them children, watch this, because they doing anything. Mm -hmm. When you know the parent is watching, you won't just do anything. Right. It's some things that the, even the grandchildren don't do, even though they get away with more than the children. <laughs> then they won't do it because Papa watching. Because mm -hmm. me, my watching. And if they do it, they looking while they do it. And I see Greg to do that. Mm -hmm. like, let me see if Greg go say something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That word that's used when he says he's going to teach you is the word Yahra, which means to direct, teach, and instruct. Instruct is a verb. You're going to tell it. I heard somebody say one time a long time ago, I told you, I showed you, I done held you by the hand. What else you want me to do? <laughs> you know what I thought out people want you to do, depending on how they learn? There are some people you can tell them, you can show them, you can hold them by the hand, but they got to touch it. Y'all know somebody like that? They tactile learners. Mm -hmm. If they touch it, they got it. Mm -hmm. Some people are vocal. I never will remember. I, I never will forget. I was training this young man, and there was a whole lot of information. And he was looking at my mouth so close he could he, he could tell if I had a cat. <laughs> he didn't write nothing down, but the passwords I told him. Everything else, he had it because he a visual learner. He's a, he's a vocal learner. We all learn differently. And some of us learn by a combination of things. Some of us, if we hear and write, I'm one of them hearing and writing. Because I got to see it. 
If I hear it and write it and I can see it, oh, I got it. But it takes that combination of the three for me. Be a living example. Anybody ever told you how to do something and they was talking and they was doing and all that? And you said, okay, show me. Let me watch you. I got a quick question for you. Don't answer the question, though. What would happen if somebody followed you around for a day? What would they learn about you? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, you don't have to answer that. Because <laughs> you know what Ephesians chapter 5 says in verse 1 and 2? It says, be imitators of God. It says, copy him and follow his example. So what I'm saying is, don't worry about trying to copy somebody else. Copy God and follow his example. Because his because you won't be getting the wrong answers. Now let me tell you something. Let, let me walk this, walk you slow through this. You can copy off of somebody else's paper and fuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might not have they they might not have the same questions as you. Right. Have to be careful who you copy off of. Because you don't know the whole story. Hmm. Verse number nine in our, in our text says, talks about that bit and that bridle. And it's what keeps the horse and that mule under control. It says, don't be sensitive like the horse or the mule. The animal is controlled by the power of fear and being tamed. We should not behave like an animal. God created us with his hand, made us in his image. The, uh, so we ought to be acting different from an animal, shouldn't we? See, I'm a curious reader, so I ask myself, what's the difference? What's a mule anyway? What's a donkey anyway? Well, a mule is a sterile offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. A mule is known for quick steps and, ability, and the ability to carry heavy loads. Um, the mule is from the donkey and a horse, and it has the behavior of both animals. That's why a mule is stubborn. You know what? I mean, sometimes I'm just kind of curious about stuff. I say, I wonder why a mule is stubborn. That's why a mule is stubborn. Because a mule is a combination genetically of that donkey and the horse. The genes of the mama and the genes of the daddy are at war with each other. Can I say this real quick? When your child is acting a certain way, sometimes you irritate it because they're acting like you. <laughs> you can see yourself. Uh -huh. True. That's why it's getting on your nerves because they acting just like you. <laughs> it's in the genes. That war in nature. I know I act like my daddy and my mom. I know that. I used to run from it. Used to try to act the, the, like, no, I don't, or whatever. And the older I got, the worse it got. But I, I got a, I got a head loaded. Mm -hmm. I got a head loaded. A mule has a stubborn nature because you know what? They got trust issues. How many got trust issues? They know they got trust issues. They don't trust, they don't trust folk. They don't trust what folks say. They got trust issues. Mm -hmm. That's because you got a war going on in there. Mm -hmm. A horse by nature is wild, ungoverned, and has to be tamed. A donkey, however, is gentle and patient, and the temperament is where they can carry a heavy load without complaints. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He loves his master and will run to him even in a crowd of men. But check this out. A donkey, even though he's called an ass, will follow the master's instructions every time. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, when I, when I found that out, I say, well, I ain't gonna call nobody and say nobody acting an ass no more. <laughs> Cause the ass follow the master's instructions. Wow, that's good. That's good. Mm. Somebody gonna say Bishop Cussing, that's in the book. <laughs> he follow instructions. Mm. 
So some of us being like that mule that's stubborn just don't want to do because you got a war going on. Wow. I got I, I, I talked about seven things that God sees. Let's talk about our eyes for a minute. We need to see what God sees. Mm -hmm. I'm almost through, y'all. We need to see what God sees. God sees us as winners. Romans 8 and 37 says we're more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the New Living Translation, it uses the phrase overwhelming victory. So I want you to know that God sees a winner. Mm -hmm. God sees a winner. God wants you to win. That's the reason why I say that. God wants you to win. He don't want you to be defeated. He wants you to be on top. He wants you to have. He don't want you to be in lack. He wants you to have the good things in life. But he also wants you to serve him. Because he don't want nothing before him. He ain't got no problem with you having no money. He ain't got no problem with what you drive. He ain't got no problem with where you live. He ain't got no problem with that. Serve him. Mm. But he wants you to serve him. My God. Mm, that's good. He sees him with him. Number two. Just something for y'all by our eyes. I did seven of them that God is watching. Look, look at number two. Married folks, dating folks, be aware of, write this down, visual adultery. Mm -hmm. Some folks ain't never heard of that. It's a such thing as that. Visual adul adultery is brought from the thought of Matthew 5, 27 through 28. It said, you've heard that it's been said by them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Y'all heard that scripture before? Yes. Now let me tell you, I didn't hear people butcher it up all kinds of ways. Butch it up. Misunderstand it. In the English, in the English Standard Version, it uses the phrase lustful intent. Mm. That's what you got to look at. Now, the word for lust in Matthew 28, I, I'm going to give y'all a strong number. The, the Greek strong number is 1937. 1937. You, you can type in Strong's Greek number 1937 and the word gonna come up. It means to focus intently, to long for, to covenant, to set the heart upon, greatly desire, focus passions that build and to crave. That's what lust is. Wow. Can I tell y'all women, can I tell y'all men, they did that in a second. Wow. I done seen men get slapped because they glanced at a woman that was passing by. Baby, if you're so insecure that you think you're going to lose him as a glance, you're in trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> Am I helping somebody today? Come on now, come on. The scripture says that word lust is to focus on intently. Wow. Men are visual. We ain't going to never stop looking. When he married you, he ain't turned blind. <laughs> but he only got eyes for you. He only got desire for you. He only want to lay down with you. But he might look at something else for a second, but he's going to keep on walking. My daddy used to say they be advertising anyway. He wouldn't say advertising. He said they be advertising anyway. <laughs> I said they be advertising. Yeah, they be advertising. That's why they be wearing them shorts like that. They be advertising. <laughs> it's disrespectful to stare. You know, pay each other some respect. But don't lose your mind. Don't lose your mind. Because you misunderstand what the scriptures say. That second was not lust, and it wasn't all it is. Didn't I say seven different things? It wasn't all that. It ain't no second. <laughs> all that didn't happen. So we need to understand that we have to trust each other in covenant relationships. We have to have understanding. We got to talk. 
And we, when, we, when we have a covenant relationship and we love God and each other, it'll be like First Lady in our 40 years and I only have eyes for her. So they can look at chocolate all they want. I only got eyes <laughs> for her. I done told some women before, baby, thank you, but I only got eyes for her. One woman was so bold, she said, well, I was just trying to see. Well, I say, well, now you know. <laughs> Let's move on. Look to the hills. Psalms 121 says, I will lift, lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He would not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel don't slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord is always watching. What did we talk about? Today was a teaching lesson. Maybe I'll preach next time. We talked about God sees our daily behavior and activity. God sees what we may think is hidden. God sees all of his children. His eyes are on all his children. God watches over us while we sleep. God's eyes do not get sleepy. God's eyes does not discriminate, discriminate according to economic, social, or physical stature, or even really even political. God watches over his word. We need to see what God sees because God sees us what? As a winner. Be aware of visual adultery. Be aware of it. Know what, script, know what that scripture means for real. And don't, don't take it and run with it. I saw a woman in the mall one time. She slapped the taste out of that man's mouth. We need partnerships. We need partnerships at, at, at the minimum level of $10, $20, $30, $40 and $50 or more of monthly partners in order for us to continue with the word of God. Guess what, guys? You know like they say on TV, and wait, and wait. We got a special bonus coming to you guys. For everybody, everyone that donates at least $20 or more, you know you're going to get something for free? You're going to get Bishop K.J. Brown a book that he just wrote out called are you ready? And there's a word here that says Harpanza. Look it up. It's in the book. I'm not going to tell you what it means, but look it up. But anyway, Bishop has wrote this wonderful book about the rapture. And guys, we need you all to, to, to donate. Every first 100 people that donate at least $20 or more will receive this free book, guys. And guess what else we got going on? Bishop K.J. Brown has built his very own radio station. We are so excited and so happy for this radio station, guys. It's going to bless you. I mean, it is phenomenal. It is, how they say, bananas. You're going to go bananas over this station, guys. Bishop Brown will be preaching at every three hours. Is it three hours? It's three, six, nine, and 12 a.m. and p.m. Around the clock. Three, six, nine, and 12. Three, six, nine. Just like a cheer. Bishop Brown will be bringing you the word of God. And guess what? It's going to be different messages. It's not going to be the same message you heard at three. It's not going to be the same message you heard at six. It's going to be different messages daily that will be on the radio station. Guys, I mean, Bishop has built this radio station. There's lots of praise and worship. You're going to hear good music, good choir music. You're going to have some contemporary music on there. You're going to have some country music on there. Is it rapping on there too, Bishop? There's going to be raps on there. I mean, guys, Christian raps, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But remember to go to www.bishopkjbrown.org in order to get more information about the ministry and also on, on order for you to click on to the radio station. Bishop Brown, go ahead on and take it away from us. Well, I just want to let everybody know that uh, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is a, a family of ministries. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Zion Tabernacle Church. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries itself. But we also, the way that we do ministry is digital in addition to some one-on-one. -on -one. But we have a radio station, and that was something God just dropped in my lap and told me to do. 
I, I didn't have any experience on how to build a radio station or how to get everything together, but God told me to put the gospel in their hands, put the praise in their hands. And I didn't understand. God gave it to me in a dream. And then I, I, I one day, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it, and I had my phone in my hand, and it came to me. That's what God was talking about. And so the radio station has it where you can send a prayer request. It, it gives you the link to send in a prayer request. It talks about uh, how you can uh, listen to the messages. I'll let you know that it's at 3, 6, 9, and 12 a.m. and p.m. And then also uh, it talks about, uh, it just talks about Jesus several times a day. And, and, and the thing about it is I wanted some praise, I wanted preaching, and I wanted prayer all in one spot. And God gave all of this for me to do, but we need your help to continue it. Yes. Uh, the radio station, uh, the programming I'm doing, uh, picking out the songs, my wife is helping with that. Uh, I'm doing too. Uh, God just putting a lot of hats on for me in terms of what I'm doing, and I'm enjoying the journey. But I need your help. We need your help. Because what we are, and we are a ministry that believes in building, winning lives for a coming Lord. We're not a prosperity theology ministry and all those kind of things. We don't have any kind of gimmicks or anything like that. We just straight up word. Mm -hmm. I preach like that. My wife preaches like that. Storyteller Pastor Simmons preaches like that. We are a word church. We're a word ministry. So I want you to know that we have the radio station. We have the building fund that we're doing because we're going to build a ministry facility, a ministry facility. We're just not building a church. We're beyond that. God showed me beyond that. The ministry facility will have the community center. It will have the worship center, and it will have the administrative offices, and that will be the television production and the radio production. Because what we're doing, we're not, we're not going to stop. We're going to do bigger. We're going to do bigger. Right now, we're on Kingdom Purpose TV. We come on every Sunday at 10 a.m., and we have in the future that it's more stations that we're going to get on because we want to reach the nation. We want to reach the city. We want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ because there is no greater value than your soul. I've been saying it for so many years. Uh, I, I'm excited about doing this commercial because I really, uh, this this. Just a little talking, uh, because I don't really like talking about me, but I love talking about Jesus. And I have a passion for this. I have a love for this. Uh, the television is for you. The radio is for you. The app is for your convenience. We send in Bibles to Africa. We've been sending Bibles to Kenya for quite some time. Uh, uh, we're going to want to try to continue to do that. I lost uh, contact with the uh, the young man, the pastor, uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we're going to try to do uh, Kenya again or either Uganda, but we, we continued in our commitment to send Bibles to Africa. The reason why we stopped is that I didn't want to send Bibles and I didn't know it was getting where it was supposed to go. I didn't want, Because I want to be, and we are good stewards over that that you give. My mother, Mother Brown, some of you know her, she always say, bless it and stretch it. And so what I do is I, I believe in what she prayed to bless it and stretch it, but also everyone that gives, it could be a dollar a month, a twenty dollars a month, or whatever it is. Anyone that gives to Bishop KJ Brown Ministry, Zion Tabernacle Church, I pray over that gift. I do it. The greatest miracle is not limbs growing, it's not people being in car accidents and the car flip over and they don't have a scratch. The greatest miracle is salvation. Greatest miracle. Greatest miracle. That's why I believe the greatest value is your soul. The Bible says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world? That's a lot, y'all. Gain the whole world and lose the sun. Greatest miracle of salvation, the greatest value is your soul. The greatest tragedy is to die and not be saved. Once appointed man to die and after death, judgment, where will you spend eternity? That's the greatest decision you can make. Not what neighborhood you're going to live in, whether it's a gated community, all those kind of things. Are you going to be with Jesus? Old preacher say, choose this day. He said, do it while the blood is running warm in your veins. And I was a little boy, 
and didn't understand that. But as I got older and, and, and I learned and stuff, I understood that because I went in the hospitals when the bodies was cold. And I understood. They said, you know what? You got to make that decision before you take your last breath. The song said he's the only way. Only way. Amen.